Hey everybody, my name is Alex, and today we're going to talk about how to construct a crossword puzzle for the New York Times or the LA Times, Newsday, USA Today, whatever your favorite newspaper is. Um, a lot of people think that Will Shorts, for instance, writes all the crosswords for the New York Times, but that's not true. He doesn't write any of them. He gets people like you and me to write them, you send them into him, he edits the puzzle if he likes it, and then you get to see your byline in the paper. So let's talk about the basics first of constructing crosswords before we get into any details. Crosswords have got to be 15 blocks wide by 15 blocks high. And there's a couple exceptions, but that's the general rule. And of course, they're not all white squares, right? You've got to have some black squares in there. And the black squares are going to look something like this. Now, generally in these puzzles, they're going to be symmetric, which means that if you took the grid and you just flipped it 180 degrees, like so, the pattern of black squares stays the same. That's unfortunately not the only restriction on the black squares. First of all, you can't have too many of them. Try to keep it under 38, uh, 40 is sometimes okay, but 38 is a good rule of thumb. And when you're done putting in the black squares, you can't have more than 78 words in the puzzle. These aren't hard and fast, but those are good guidelines. There are a couple other things, no one letter words and no two letter words in the puzzle. You gotta have all uh, three letter words or more. All right, the first thing you do when you're constructing a puzzle is you come up with a theme. Why? Because all early week crosswords have a theme. And by early week, I mean Monday through Thursday, Friday and Saturday are themeless, but we're not going to be talking about that in this video. Uh, secondly, about the theme, there's got to be quite a bit of it. Uh, the general rule is at least three entries, totaling at least 33 squares. Uh, if you've done a lot of crosswords, you've probably noticed themes before, but if you haven't, let's talk about uh, where exactly the theme goes. Uh, the theme is usually the longest across entries in the puzzle. Uh, it's not always true, sometimes they're down but for the most part it's the longest of cross entries. And here's the tricky part. The theme entries have to be symmetric. They have to have symmetric lengths because remember, the crossword itself is symmetric, right? And so the theme is this is gonna be the longest of cross entries. The theme has gotta fit symmetrically in the grid. Uh, let's show you a concrete example of what I'm talking about here. For instance, let's say you had uh, uh, a quip in mind that you thought would make a great crossword puzzle like this one you see from Dimitri Martin. Right? It's kind of short, it's to the point, it's funny. Could it work as a crossword? Yeah, if you can break it up into symmetric chunks. And thankfully in this one we can. You can do the first one is 13, the second chunk is 15, and the third chunk is also 13. Uh, so the top one and the bottom one are symmetric pairs, and the center one's going to go in the middle like so. So if you can take, find a theme, break it up into symmetric chunks so it fits into long entries, long across entries like that, then you're good to go. Now, there are lots of themes you might have seen, but we're going to use a hidden word theme for our puzzle. And the inspiration for this hidden word theme is going to be the book and movie Angels and Demons. Now, the theme's not going to have anything to do with the book or the movie. All we're going to do is take the word angel and the word demon and hide them in certain phrases. Like Brangelina, Maya Angelou, those two have a hidden angel, Pandemonium, and Code Monkey. Notice with Code Monkey, the demon is split across two words. That's actually a good thing. If you can do that, that's even better. You want to try to make these as fun as possible. Brangelina is a nice, fun entry. Code Monkey is a fun entry. <laughs> but I'm not actually going to use these particular entries when we're making this crossword, but that's a good idea. Remember what we need to do. We need to find symmetrical ones, ones that are pretty interesting, and preferably ones that are split across two words. And so here's what I'm going to do. Tangelo Tree, strangely. I'm going to have the defining entry, Angels and Demons, the 15-letter entry. Uh, to explain what's going on, Desdemoni, Desdemona from Othello, and Claude Monet. They split up symmetrically. Now, these may not be as interesting as the ones I showed you before, but the reason we're going to go with these guys is because I'm going to try to make up for the lack of interest by the interest of construction. Notice that the defining entry, Angels Demons, crosses the other four entries. It's a risk, but you hope something like that would uh, be pleasing to an editor and you run your puzzle. All right. So let's move over to the software we're going to use to make this puzzle. This is called Crossfire, and I highly recommend it. Google Crossfire crossword to find it. Uh, it does everything you want when constructing a puzzle. Uh, it's a very reasonable cost. You get free updates forever for the cost you pay. Go check it out. It's called Crossfire. All right, now that I've advertised for that enough, let's start putting in some black squares. First of all, we need a black square next to Tangelo Tree, and to Strangely, to cut those off, we also need it next to Desdemona and Claude Monet, but you notice that Crossfire automatically preserves the symmetry for us. Now we've got a two-letter word up there. Let's fill that in. We can't have any two-letter words. 
Then we got to fill in the rest of the black squares. Now this is sort of a matter of experience. Uh, keep in mind the restrictions on the black squares. Also, when you're putting in the black squares in the puzzle, you want to uh, avoid any bad letter patterns that might come up. Uh, I don't see any here, so we can pretty much put the black squares wherever. But you want to break up any long words, like that Avery Brooks. Let's break that up, right? Put a square there. And try to break up any long words and break up any letter patterns that look bad. Now this might be okay. Let's see, we have the statistics over there. 76 words, that's fine. 34 blocks, that's okay. I don't see anything that looks really too hard to fill, just offhand. There's no one letter words, there's no two letter words. We can look at the three letter word count over there. Looks like there are 18 of them. 20 is about the maximum you would want, so this looks pretty good. So if we're satisfied with that, we can start filling it. Click the Fill tab up there. It'll start generating candidates. You can click on the Best Location bar to find the best location to start filling. And so off we go. This is sort of a guided process where you're guiding the computer. You're helping the computer to fill this puzzle. And you're probably going to have to go back. I'm making it look easy here, just filling things in. But occasionally you're going to fill something in. It's going to make a corner like this one that might be really hard to fill. Uh, skipped ahead a little bit here. Go through, let the, you help the computer figure out what the best fill for your puzzle would be. So we're almost done here, just put in orange locale, these guys. And then we get to start everybody's least favorite part of puzzle making, which is writing the clues. Now, writing the clues can be fun, but it's kind of a chore. And notice that Crossfire suggests some clues down here for you. If you have Matt Ginsburg's clue database, don't do that. I can't stress this enough. Write your own clues. Let's just get rid of that and start writing your own clues. At first, the editors might reject, reject a lot of the clues you wrote, but don't worry about it. Keep at it. Write some interesting stuff, uh, like this foam clue. It's found on the rabbits, the rapids rather, or on the rabid. It's true for foam. For ape, I'm writing you're a great one. It's great in quotes. It's true. We're humans are great apes. Ironer, I'm writing one with pressing work, question mark, because he literally presses clothes. It's not that his work is in a hurry. It's just he's pressing clothes. For man and tangelo tree, I'm including a certain hybrid manufacturer, question mark, hoping somebody will think about hybrid cars, etc. Try to make it fun, try to make interesting things out of it, but it's not always easy, and it can be a chore. Well, don't worry too much about it. Let's, through the magic of editing, skip ahead. All right, we're done cluing. Uh, we're done filling in the puzzle, so let's put in our, ti our, our title for the puzzle, which doesn't matter. New York Times crossers don't have titles. Put in your name. Copyright, by the way, when you sell this to a newspaper, they will take the copyright away from you. So don't worry too much about that field. But speaking of selling it to newspapers, to send something to the, LA, to the New York Times, go up to File, go to Print, Crossfire does this for you, NYT Submission. It'll print out something you can send to Will Shorts. Just put in your postal and email address, and you're all done. You could send off your masterpiece just by clicking OK. All right, a couple more things to talk about other resources. We've already talked about Crossfire, which I highly recommend. Uh, Matt Ginsburg's Clue Database, I mentioned briefly, I checked that out, but also number one has got to be cruciverb.com. Cruciverb.com, uh, if you pay for a gold membership, you get access to their Clue Database. You get access to a large word list, which is the word list I showed you when I was constructing that puzzle. You also get access to a large community of crossword constructors who are very, very helpful. So number one, go to cruciverb.com, get a membership if you're serious about constructing crosswords. Number two, crossword puzzle challenges for dummies. It'll tell you a lot of the stuff I've told you in this video, except it'll also cover all the stuff that you can't cover in a 10-minute YouTube video. It's by Patrick Berry, who is probably the greatest crossword constructor in the world. Uh, he knows what he's talking about. There's a lot of his puzzles in there, too, which makes it even better. So check that out on Amazon. I'm going to throw a link into the description of this YouTube video. Number three, OneLook.com. OneLook.com is especially good because you can easily find themes like the one we showed today. You type in star, angel, star, it'll show you phrases with a hidden angel in them. You type in star demon star, it'll show you phrases with a hidden demon. And if you go to options and choose crossword puzzle mode, it'll even find Code Monkey and Claude Monet too. All right, that's it for me. Uh, my time's just about up. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching.